Hey gamers, it's Winter Mute here from Grind This Game, back with Oxygen Not Included. So last night I, I had recorded um, about an hour and a half of footage with uh, some new recording software, a new version of the recording software that I use. And it had that mouse pointer issue, but it was even worse than before where the mouse pointer would be like far to the left of my actual thing. And it was driving me nuts, so it was probably gonna drive you guys nuts. So what I'm gonna do here is basically take you through the base and show you the changes I did, a bit of a show and tell. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is I put in showers. Yay, the dupes are so happy now and they're not gonna be grimy. Now I don't usually use showers because they just basically waste all their time in here and it uses quite a bit of, of water. But this is a source of uh, polluted water for us because we we're running out of polluted water. So I'm using uh, abyssalite pipes. The water is going in at 95, coming in, coming out at basically 95. And luckily these showers are not, uh, they're not heating up. I thought they would be like the toilets, but let's see. The actual shower itself is at 26 degrees. Even though there's little bits of water in here that are really hot, it doesn't seem to be as bad an issue as the lavatories were. These were getting really hot, so I put some warts in here. So the polluted water comes down here, mixes it with our toilet water, and drips down into our polluted water tank here. So that's working well. This is, sorry, this is pretty warm right here, 46, but this polluted water goes up into our fertilizer makers and gets destroyed. And we got lots of fertilizer being made here. I should probably put some hatches in here to eat the fertilizer. And then I'll, eventually I'll put in a um, shipping uh, auto sweeper to grab this fertilizer, or sorry, to grab the coal and ship it off to some hatch farm. Uh, the other thing I did uh, was change over some of our plants. So we got rid of the mealwood and didn't want to run out of dirt. So we replaced it with hydroponic um, bristle blossoms and that's working well. The water's coming in at 20 degrees. Now my, my cold water tank over here, it's not as cold as it used to be, 21 degrees, 20 degrees. All this oxygen production is kind of heating up this area, which I don't want. So what I've been doing to try to cool it is just build um, ice sculptures kind of above this area and then they melt in. This is a temporary solution, not very good. But it is kind of working. Now I've grabbed almost every single weaselwort on the map. Let's zoom out Alt S here. We got another nullifier here I want to use. There's a weaselwort there I could use. Oh, there's a bunch in here. So we still have quite a few in here we could use. And this is the other main thing I did over here. So I'll try to explain what I've done here. <laughs> so I built a sealed room. This is all abyssalite around this side. And I'm not sure what this tile is made out of, obsidian. Yeah, so this is the original tile. I built abyssalite around here and here and then metal tile along here, which conducts uh, cold and heat really well. So what I'm doing is I got an electrolyzer here, creating hydrogen and oxygen, and I'm sucking it up, and I'm filtering out the hydrogen, and I'm sending it to, I guess, four places. Initially, I was just sending it into this room to vent out all the oxygen. So this room is mainly hydrogen now, up until about this point. So that squeezed out all the oxygen because hydrogen rises. So I had a, a vent here and I had a vent here, actually, that's still there. So that filled this room with hydrogen, high pressure. Oh wow, seven kilograms. I don't know how it got to seven kilograms with the vent like this. That's really weird. Six kilograms. Okay, I don't understand that. It should only be at the max of the vent. Anyway, lots of hydrogen in there, which is good for cooling. We're sending some hydrogen into the nullifier to actually make it cool, and it's at around 29, sorry, 26 degrees, minus 26 degrees. And then we're sending our hot oxygen, which is coming out at, uh, well, it's not hot anymore, but it was coming out at 27 degrees. Around there, 20 to, it was coming out around 20 to 30. And we're radiating it through this really cold room. 
and then it's coming out even colder at around minus four or minus five. This is actually a little bit too cold now. It took uh, probably 50 cycles to get this th whole room down to minus 20. It started out at, uh, I forget what it was, like close to zero. Basically this thing used to be really hot and it has since cooled down. So this is working really, really well. I I'm liking this. I don't know if I can double up my oxygen production. I was going to put another electrolyzer here and two more pumps. But uh, we'll see. We'll try to put it in and stay see if it can stay cool. Because I don't want my oxygen production way over here to stay here any longer. Because it's just heating up everything. The other thing heating up this area, of course, is the 95 degree water that's coming in. 92 degree water. So we'll just um, explain this a little bit better over here. Oh, I changed out some of these to be hydroponic as well. This area is around 20 degrees, which is okay for now, but we can't let this water get too hot. If this gets up to like 30 degrees, then we're in trouble. So we got that. That's been enough food for everyone. What else have I done? I still got my little hatch going here. And does he have any igneous rock? Yeah, he's still got 16 tons. So what I did for this, I explained it last time, but I just built a tile here and a storage compactor on top. And you need the tile to be able to build it on top. Let's speed things up. So there we go, and then we select Igneous rock to put in here. We fill it up and then once the hatch is all out of igneous rock We just dump the igneous rock from here down into here We can actually get rid of this tile now And now that we have some plastic um, Where's plastic? Down here. We could actually build a proper hatch farm Not sure if I'll do that this episode, but so that's the other big project we did down this way. I've kind of carved all this out. I extended uh, the natural gas power. Oh, and I'm using smart batteries now. I've never really used smart batteries before, but they are freaking awesome. I'm really loving them. So I'll try to explain what they do. If you don't know, if you do, then you can ignore this part. But basically, um, before we had these smart batteries, natural gas power would just kind of run all the time, consuming our natural gas. So even if this, even if the circuit was only like drawing, let's say, 20 watts out of the possible 800, this thing would be running nonstop and wasting our fuel. Sorry for uh, pausing once in a while, but. Um, or muting, I should say. Just gotta drink some water and I don't wanna drink in your ear. I'm trying to do this all in one take, so we'll see how it goes. So, smart batteries. Um, basically, if you hover over this active thing here, it says logical input will become active when the battery is less than 42% charged, and you can adjust this. So what happens is, um, this battery will cause the logic circuit to go on if it's below 42%, which it is right now. And then once the battery fills up, the generator stops working. So we can see in the automation, now it's off. So we're saving fuel, this thing's not running. But the minute the battery drops below 42% or whatever I have it set at, 42, it kicks back on again. So this circuit's pretty um, power hungry, but some of these other circuits, like this one, you can see this one's idle. It's hooked up to this smart battery. So if your power draw on the circuit is very inter intermittent, this saves you a lot of gas and power and heat generation. So we'll just watch this one here. Yeah, power's going down, down, and then it kicks on. 
yeah, so these things are really great. I'm they're my new favorite tool. Saving tons of gas, saving tons of heat generation. The battery itself doesn't hold as much, but it doesn't really matter. And batteries, as of this update, they lose a tiny bit of electricity over time, but not, not a whole lot. So the other big project uh, is gonna that I did was this plastic operation. So I made a sealed room. It's granite, so the heat can escape. I jammed in some extra wheeze warts, as you can see. I took some out of the base because the base was too cold. Uh, actually, let's take a look at the base here. Minus, or 16. And the oxygen coming in is coming in at minus 4 over here. And, oh, 32, that's not good. Yeah, our oxygen is getting too warm. We could put it through a uh, thermoregulator. In fact, I might do that. Because 30 is a bit too warm. But it's getting offset by this cold oxygen here. So that's kind of a project I'll do. I'll move that oxygen generation from the left over to the right. And we'll take advantage of those uh, nullifiers. So back to this. Um, I'm pumping oil from down below. Oh, oh, the other thing is these slicksters. I don't know if they multiplied. But there is so many of them down here. I opened up a lot of the pockets to free them, but when I looked down here, there was just so many of them. I don't know if it's a bug, whether they, they're mating and making babies, or look at them all. I swear there's more than there were before. Yeah, so look at, look at this. So many. There's even one trapped in here. We should liberate him. So we're pumping oil from down here. This is a gold pump so it doesn't get overheat. We're sending it up this way. And I used granite tile or granite pipe up until about here because it's okay if the heat escapes. And then for this last little bit here I used uh, abyssalite. And we've got our dupes manually running this um, oil refinery which takes the input of oil and exports hot 74 degree petroleum. And this is all abyssalite pipe. And the reason I made a, like a little radiator here, it's not really a radiator because it's abyssalite. It allows the dupe to kind of fill up the pipe and then the plastic maker can chew through it. So we're making plastic. I put a wheeze ward here because sometimes the plastic was coming out and uh, turning into naphtha right away. It would get up to 70 degrees. So this water on the ground here is 64 degrees. That's keeping this thing cool. Without the little dribblet of water, these things melt down almost instantly. Oh, there's our plastic. Let's take, in, take a look at that. 72 degrees. Oh no. This thing, plastic melts at 76. So I have a, priority, a high priority storage container right here to get the plastic out of that hot room. And there they go. They got it. I used to have two running, but it got too hot. And I also added some regulation. So I got a thermo, um, what are these things called? Temp, uh, thermo sensor here. So if this room gets too hot, if it gets above, that's okay. If it gets, uh, <laughs> activate it below 45. Yeah, so if this room gets over 45, this thing just shuts down which is good. It makes sure that this doesn't get too hot. Oh, and I have a mini pump here I'm using. Uh, I used a mini pump just so, because there's not that much natural gas that builds up in here. But once the pressure goes over a thousand grams in this little area here, we pump the natural gas, or we pump all the air into a filter, select natural gas, and send that natural gas off into our, we got like a backup kind of natural gas generator here. Which is not connected to anything, I, I just realized. That's not good. Maybe we should hook it up to something. <laughs> I'll do that later. I, I also put a metal refinery in here. 
And I was powering it with coal power. And essentially it, it grabs some of this polluted water and then spits out the, the heated water back into this polluted water tank. Which is fine because this polluted water is just going to get destroyed up here in our fertilizer makers. Ever since I added these smart batteries and the regulation, uh, we've been barely using this natural gas. So we could, you know, probably put even more circuits in. Okay, what else is going on in here? Um, other projects that I've done. Oh, I did find another natural gas geyser. Now, where was it? It's Sneaky Devil. It's somewhere in here. Uh, where did it go? Oh, here it is. I heard it. I didn't see it. I heard it as I was hovering around here. So there, there it is. We have to get in there at some point. I don't want to go in through the puffed area, so I'll probably come across here and get it. Yeah, I might dig across here. Now this oil is super cold. Look at this. It didn't form the abyss light layer because it, I think there's a bug whenever these point of interest get loaded in, it, it kind of breaks some of the uh, abyss light linings. So we should really go in there and make an abyss light wall to kind of Oh, it's getting really cold in here, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I should get in there really soon and... and block that off. Maybe I should do it right now, actually. How warm is it there? We could go up and over. Speed things up. We'll actually do that right now. Go up this way. And we don't want to let that cold out. So we'll dig across here. Right to here, I guess. And then we'll build an abyssalite wall to kind of prevent all this cold from mixing in. Now we could release this oil here and then build our abyssalite wall along here. I'll probably do the same up here. This is really cold. We don't want to kill our, uh, our little guys here, our slicksters. Because I, I don't know exactly what temperature they die at, but it's, uh, they like it warm, that's for sure. So we'll let them kind of work on that. And let's actually put in some traps. We could try to trap our slicksters in here. Now, how should we do this? I might put a little ladder down here. Make, I could make a little slickster farm in here. Deconstruct that. Is that what we want? Hmm. I probably shouldn't do this while I'm doing everything in one take because you don't want to hear me think. So maybe I'll do that project later. We just want to stem the cold from getting in here. That's the main objective. So I think I'll just do abyssalite all along here. I'll make a wall down here and then we'll seal this off here. Actually there's abyssalite right there so that would be good to there. Don't need to do that. That should contain it. Actually, oh, there's no abyssalite right here. So let's just do it all the way across. 
Bisolite to... Hmm. Right here should be good. Now they're gonna need a ladder to get in there. Let's use igneous rock since there's tons of igneous rock all over the place here. Like that. Now this cold oil is gonna come out and due to the bug it might cool down this oil a lot but hopefully not. We don't want our guys dying. We do have a, lot, a good surplus of them so it might be okay. So we'll seal that and then we'll build a wall kind of along here. How cold is that oil? Pretty cold, but it's only a little bit of it, so we'll maybe go up here. Now we don't want this to break due to the pressure. Hmm. I wonder if one tile will be enough. That's a lot of liquid there. I guess we'll find out. What's the pressure like in here? 1,000 kilograms. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. We'll build a... Uh, a desolate up like this. Oh, we gotta go all the way. Because this, uh, this is all cold in here. So we'll just go right to the top here. Like that. Build our ladder. Is that granite? Igneous rock is fine. Like that. Good thermal wall to keep all that away. I think that'll work. What priority is that? All eight and sevens? Perfect. Oh no, oh no, this is dripping. What? This is breaking. Oh no. That is really bad. <laughs> uh, okay. That is really, really, really bad. Okay, let's, uh, priority nine. Buildings. Remove this ladder. Red alert. I'm gonna stress our guys out a little bit. We can't let this break, because this is all gonna freeze everything. Okay, we'll get that out of there, and we'll replace it with Abyssalite, priority nine. Don't build that ladder, build this. Can't let this break. And hopefully two tiles will be enough. Come on, bubbles. Why are they going there? Build this. Did I make it priority nine? I did. Why are they... Oh, I guess they're being efficient. They're delivering... Okay, now this tile's got to go. Priority nine. And hopefully two tiles will be enough. That's a lot of liquid above it. Oh, they're not going to be able to reach that one, so we'll cancel that. That can be an eight. This is crisis management. Now, is that going to break under pressure? I think it might be okay. Made a mess. Oh, I still have red alert on. Uh -huh. Where did they make a mess? Oh, that's an okay place. Priority six, mop it. Okay, that should keep all that cold in there once they finish it all up. I just can't believe how many of these little guys there are. It's crazy. Now that we have some plastic, we can maybe do our hatch farm. Oh, and here's our one container that we're putting everything in. So what I do is I clear it, everything drops on the floor, and everything that I've ever swept up is on the floor here. There's a lot of stuff here. 
Oh, I just realized it doesn't merge the sandstone piles. It's got a bunch of different piles. Interesting. And then we put everything back in here, except liquefiable. For sweep only, and then we can sweep up stuff. Now I think I'll sweep up this area. Because I think this is where I'm going to put my hatch farm. We kind of have one here, but... We want to have a centralized hatch farm. Now how many do we have in there? Igneous rock, 12 tons, that's still going. Okay, it's all looking pretty good. This might be a shorter episode just because uh, I'm trying to do it all in one take. And I lose my voice after so many, so many minutes. <laughs> That's why I usually do a lot of editing. I record in little chunks of like 20 minutes. Okay. How's everything doing over here? 28 degrees. That's too warm. How much power do we have over here? 960. 240. Okay, let's put a thermoregulator. We're going to heat up this area even more. This will be temporary. Uh -huh. Someone said uh, something like temporary solutions become permanent, and it's kind of true. But my plan is to move... Oh, we got a lot of water here. Is to move all of this uh, over to the right. And then this area should stay a bit cooler. Oh, we got a something in here we could go and access. I do have a little bit of a hydrogen collection thing up here. That uh, if the pressure goes above 800 grams, we essentially burn up the hydrogen. It's kind of a waste. Yeah, so 23 degrees. Yeah, this is warming up in here. We need more sculptures. So that's, uh, that'll help, I think. The thermo, um, whatchamacallit, let's put one of those in. Thermo regulator. Now, this might get too hot, but... Well, we actually don't want it on this circuit. We want it on this circuit. So I might have to move some wires around here. We'll go around here like that. Stick it in there. And utilities. Now hopefully this, okay, this older version of the recording software has an issue where um, the, the timing of the audio gets lagged behind the, the visuals and it gets worse as the video gets longer so normally I would just end the videos at like end the recordings at 20 minute intervals and then put them together in the editing software but I'm trying to do, do it all in one take here so let's send that oxygen through here now and get rid of this that should cool it down a bit oh no <laughs> they didn't finish in time that's okay we'll do it in the morning someone asked about how how to cool water 
And I'm kind of do it in a really in a primitive way here, building in an ice biome and adding ice sculptures. I mean, you can build a, a Borg cube, which is like a I've used in my previous bases where you circulate oil in a in a small loop and it gets super cooled. But that's using a bit of an exploit, so I try not to use that. Okay, here we go. So it's going in at 27, coming out at 12. That's nice and cool. The base will be nice and freezing. Oh, and how hot is this thing going to get? These things give off a lot of heat. We'll have to keep an eye on this thing. It does have some water on the ground. That'll help cool it a bit. We've got this wheeze wart here. In fact, we should plant more wheeze warts. Because <laughs> we do have more. Temporarily. We'll stick one here and one here. So we got one there, but I saw a whole bunch up top. This map actually has a lot of ice biome. I'll do a final count of all the... Uh, Weezworts eventually, but there's a lot of them. Got one there. Wait, I think we have five in here. Oh no, it wasn't here, it was somewhere else. So let's get these. Yeah, we got five right in here. So priority eight. Grab these. This one we'll need a ladder for, we'll get later. Now one little tip if you're if you're going to dig into the ice biome like this is to extend your ladder a little bit lower than you actually need it because often they'll dig through snow and the snow will pile up and then they won't be able to use the ladder anymore and they'll get trapped. Same thing, uh, the other good use of having this ladder go down a little bit extra is as, as they dig through snow and stuff sometimes it'll melt and same thing, thing can happen well, you'll get a, p a pool of water at the bottom. So if you leave a little trough, the water can just kind of pool in there. So, Weezworts. Let's plant a whole bunch of those down in our area here. Just copy the settings of this. We'll just go crazy with the Weezworts. We can store them here, put them to good use until we move all this oxygen generation over. Now this thing is at 55 degrees. That's pretty hot. Hopefully it doesn't melt down. We can also put a ice block here. And here, and here. <laughs> That'll keep it cool. With all those weasel warts and ice blocks, this thing should stay cool for a while. So yeah, smart batteries, you can use them on coal as well. Super useful. Oh, I have these on priority nine. Interesting. What are they, what are they attached to? Oh, all this stuff. Oh, I used the wrong circuit. I move that wire and then I use the wrong circuit. You guys are probably like, what is he doing? Okay, let's remove that wire. And we want to actually use this over here. Let's go up and over. There we go. Yeah, we had too much power on this line before it could have overloaded, but luckily it didn't. Yeah, late game is always about cooling. It's all about cooling. <laughs> I should put some low priority paintings along here as well. Actually, do they still need water from the pitcher pump? Oh yeah, I haven't replaced I should replace this line of uh, food 
with hydroponics so they're not having to go here all the time. I think we have even more Weezworts, so let's just go nuts and plant them. Where else? We can put one here. That should stay nice and cool. Actually, this water is freezing in here. Okay, so that should help. Oh, 48 degrees. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. How's oxygen? How's temperature? 19. Nice. Nice. There they are in the showers, wasting their water. Idle 3. Now, I don't dare open the job screen because that causes a lag for still a few seconds. So I won't do that. This is staying mostly full of CO2, which I like. So that means our food is sterile. Let's just take a look. Unrefrigerated. Sterile atmosphere. Okay, good. Got CO2 there. How's this thing doing? Good. Oh, they still haven't dug this. Did I do a low priority? Low. Priority 7. Get in there, guys. Oh, they went up already. We, oh, we don't even have to dig this. I mean, we could get the diamonds and stuff, but... Okay, that's all abyssalite. Oh, they weren't able to get this. Okay. Hmm. I think we'll take out this tile, build this, and then put it back. Maybe even put three layers here. Hopefully this doesn't break. The one above it didn't break, so... Let's see how that goes. This recording is getting a bit long. Sorry I uh, wasn't able to show kind of as I built it. But you would have been driven insane by the uh, mouse pointer being in the wrong place. It was so far off that if you see the slickster here, oh actually, that's a bad, if you see this piece of metal on the ground here, that's where the pointer was showing up and then my cursor would be over here, so it would be like, it's really jarring. Okay, let's go build these tiles back again, priority nine. There's another YouTuber, uh, Biffa, who does uh, oxygen not included. And he cracks me up, because he uses priority 9 for everything. And his dupes just kind of go crazy. I use it a lot when I want to get stuff done. I try not to use it as much, though. Oh, we should have freed this little guy here. I wonder if he'll come out if we remove this one tile. Let's see. Where is everyone? Oh, here they come. Come out, come out. Come down. It's warm here, you like it. Okay, he's not coming out. We will seal him back in there. So we can't let this temperature... Let's do that. We'll probably take out this ladder. So is that all contained? That's all abyssalite, that's abyssalite. Yeah. So this eventually will heat, this should reheat. Just from all this super hot stuff down here. 29 degrees. It should reheat. That's the theory at least. We could open up some magma, that would really heat things up. And I eventually want to play with the steam turbine. Not this episode, but... They've changed it so many times, I don't even know what the, uh... How it works now. 
Under using pressurized scalding steam. Output significantly cooler steam than it receives. Okay, so they changed it yet again. Before it was destroying steam and now it sounds like it gives off cooler steam. So we'll I'll play with that in debug mode off camera just to see how it works and then we'll try to use it in our base. But I think that's going to be it for this episode. We're at uh, 40 minutes. And that's kind of a, a review of all the stuff that I built in my in my recordings that didn't work. So let me know if you want me to go over any of the details, any of the piece, you know, things I changed, cooling, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.